ahead and give it a start. So my name is Mickey Hudson. I am a Husqvarna Viking educator. And today's Facebook Live is going to be on the quilt binder attachment. Um, and when you get it, it comes in a box like this. We are going to talk about all the little pieces and how to adjust it and how to do the miters. That's the number one thing most people want to uh, know about. Um, but when it comes to the quilt binder attachment, you are going to get all these little things here. So one of the things that you're going to get is the attachment plate. Now the attachment plate attaches to the needle plate. And on newer machines, they have the appropriate holes that we need. We need a hole for this little um, gizmo here, and we need a hole for our screw to hold it down. Um, the older machines like the, uh, the Topaz, the Diamond, the Rubies, um, the Opals, etc., you will need to also get an extra needle plate, one that has the holes in it. And we'll talk about what the holes are in a bit. You also get the binder attachment itself. And this is what this looks like. So when he comes in, he's going to be nice and folded up. So we're just going to want to unfold that. It will come with all the little screws that you need and the washers. And it will also come with a plate for the interchangeable dual feed walking foot. Now, if you do not have the interchangeable dual feed, and this is how you will tell. So if you have what I call the old style, it has the plate on it that is attached. You can't take it off, it's one plate, that's what you get. If with the interchangeable, you can actually add plates to it. So that's where this is gonna come in, is this plate will just snap in to the, the attachable, interchangeable walking foot. Now when it comes to Who's Going to Viking Designer Epic 2, we do not need the dual feed walking foot because we have our walking foot oop, built right in. So this is the integrated built on, off, and integrated on. Now the integrated dual feed is actually part of the uh, machine. It's integrated into the machine. And one of the nice things about it being integrated into the machine is it has its own motor. So we actually get really, really a lot of control with it. Um, with the interchangeable walking foot, or what I call the old style walking foot, um, it does work well with the thicker layers, um, but it doesn't like to go backwards. So just pay attention to your stitches when you do that. Um, the, inter the integrated doesn't mind going backwards, but we're gonna go ahead and um, delve in a little bit more. So in the instruct, the, the, the package too, you will get instructions. Now there are really nice instructions and step-by-step -step on how everything works. Um, and it has an how to end your quilt. Now this is the, the way that they have your instructions are perfectly fine. And they are great when you're starting because it will be a straight edge um, ending. However, when I end, I like to actually end with one of these miters versus a straight. So we're going to talk about that as well. Um, but one of the first things that we want to do is once we get it attached to, excuse me while I make everybody seasick again, I want to move this back here so you can get a better view. All right. So once you get this all attached, so here I showed you the needle plate or the uh, attachment plate. That is this guy sitting back here. Okay. And then this will get attached like so. So this is where the other little screws come in. So this gets attached. And once this is attached, I leave it alone. I'm getting some comments here. Hold on a second. Okay. So um, once we get this attached, I, as you can see, I just leave these here. And this is the one that I'll always attach afterwards. Okay. Um, to, sorry, I'm getting, okay. So they're going to let me know when there's questions. Um, my little crew of Ryan, Thomas, and Meredith, they are very helpful to me. So thank you very much. 
So everybody say hi, guys. Um, but once these get attached, I just leave these attached. And this is how I, I change it. And I'll show you what I mean now that I've got this one. So when I take this off, this is how I store it. I just keep it stored like this. But this, the holes that I was talking about, there's this little gizmo here, and he needs a hole. And there's this little gizmo here, and he needs a hole. So they're going to attach onto that. Now, when you first get it, you may want to do a little bit of adjusting. Um, and how we do that is with all these little screws and all this kind of stuff. So I'm going to pull this guy over for just a moment so we can take a look at this one unattached. So if you take a look in here, there's this little horseshoe here, and this is where the binding is going to set in there and wrap around. And if you take a look, there's these little edges here, these little hang downs, these little teeth. Those are going to line up with the binding on the top and the bottom. So these little screws here will adjust those into position. So if you want, for instance, nice and even, you can adjust the top and the bottom. If you want more of an underbite, where you want more fabric underneath, you can adjust that this left screw or this right screw um, and adjust to make more of an underbite. So this one, this screw will adjust this top piece and this screw will adjust the bottom piece. So you can adjust it and, and uh, fiddle with it that way. And then these will adjust you side to side. And we're going to talk about how that can come in quite handy. But once you get it adjusted just the way you like it, then you can just unscrew it out of here. It's great. Now, this little guy here has many different names. Some people call it a rake. Some people call it a fence. Some people call it a squiggly roux. But this is what's going to, once we get to go um, to sewing, you're going to see we're going to wrap our binding around here. And this is what's going to kind of keep the tension on it so that we get a nice um, feed. All right. So when I'm talking about um, adjusting real quick, so if I'm going to be stitching and I want my stitching to be close to the edge, this is, this is good. But let's say I wanted to do some stitching where I want it to be more balanced, where the needle is more in the center of between my fabric and my binding. That's where these can come in. So I can just scooch over and get that into position. Or you can have two and have one set up for decorative stitches and one set up for straight stitching. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and the first thing that we want to do is we want to create some binding strips. So the binding strip on the device itself, I'm going to go ahead and pull this back up. It will tell you right on the device itself how much uh, fabric that are, how wide our strips need to be. So we need one and three quarter inch wide strips to come out to create a half inch binding. So one and three quarter inch strips is what we're going to be cutting, um, whether you're on the straight grain or the bias. And this is, these will fit in. Now this is a single edge binding, meaning that once it wraps, you will only have one edge, which is perfectly fine for many quilts. However, if you would prefer two edges, two, uh, you can actually stitch out, you would double your fabric. So instead of cutting one and three quarter inch wide, you would cut three and three and a half inch wide, fold it in half, and then just treat it like a one and three quarter inch wide. Now it is a little bulkier, um, so you want to be patient with yourself, and that is not where I would suggest starting when you're playing. Um, then you would, uh, after you've done some practice a little bit, then you can switch to the double fold. Um, if you have the original Epic, would you use the dual feed walking foot? Yes, yes you would. But I'm going to go ahead and take this off, and I am going to sew some binding strips. 
The other thing too that I wanted to show you was whether or not you have a MySonet Wi-Fi machine, there are some apps that are available. One in particular that even if you don't have a MySonet Wi-Fi mach capable machine, it will come in quite handy. And it is called the Joy OS Advisor. So you can go to your App Store or Google Play or MySonet.com or whoscardaviking.com and download the app. If you have a MySonet Wi-Fi capable machine, it's interactive. So you can send information from here directly to your Wi-Fi capable machine. But there's all kinds of helpful tips in here, including an accessory guide. So if you take a look at the accessory guide in quilting, we have the quilt binder, we have setup, and we have how to use it. So it's quite handy, What, like I said, whether or not you have a Wi-Fi, a MySonet Wi-Fi capable machine, the apps are great. So the other two apps that you saw, they only work with a MySonet Wi-Fi capable machine. All right, but we're gonna make some strips, um, some binding strips. Now, if you've ever, if you've never uh, made long binding strips before, I'm gonna help you out. And if you've done it before, then this is old news. And some of you may have done it before, but are may learn a trick or two. So one of the things when we do our binding is we want to put our right sides together and cross over at a, at a 90 degree angle. Now we want to sew from corner to corner. And this is where especially new quilters can get a little hung up. Um, I used to do it myself, is which corner to which corner, because there's a right way and there's a wrong way. And I just found out where this little catchphrase came comes from. I've used it for years. But if you look at these as a pair of pants, and these are the legs, we're going to sew from hip to hip, and we want to stay away from the crotch. So it's an easy way to remember how to sew this up. Now, I happen to have a laser guidance system, so I'm just going to turn my laser guidance system on. This is on the Husqvarna Viking Designer Epic 2. If you don't, you can draw a line as well, or there's, there's other guides. But I'm going to go ahead and use my laser guidance. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tap my foot down. And many of you have this particular capability. If you tap the needle again, it'll drop your needle and raise your foot into the pivot. I like to scooch my my uh, point right into right up next to the needle. Another thing that I am going to do, oops, let me drop my needle again. Another thing that I am going to do is I am going to change my stitch length down to about 1.5. So I want these nice and tight. There's a couple of reasons why I do that. Um, one is it's easy to stitch or easy to, it holds together really well, but two is it presses very nicely. It stays nice and flat when you're pressing. I'm just going to stitch across. I'm not going to do all my binding. I'm just going to do this. Now you are going to see some things happen with my hands free, and that is because I am using the multifunction foot control, which I absolutely adore. So when we're done with these, we can go ahead and trim these off and they will open up into a long, a long strip. So you just give them a press. Okay, one of the things too, so, when you give them a press, when you clip these off and give them a press, one of the things that you want to keep in mind is you want to have them feed through the binder with the seam pushed away. You'll see it, I'll show you again what I'm talking about. But we're gonna go ahead and clip that. But when we're in the binder, what I'm talking about is when it's feeding through the binder, we want the seam to be pressed in this direction. So as you're pressing your binding, just keep it all going in the right direction. If you have it going this way, it tends to get caught. So just kind of keep an eye on it when you um, wind it in and put it in. All right. 
So what everybody wants to know about is these miters. How do you make your miters? So the miters, you can see here, this one you can see better. They come out quite good when you do them. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how this is done. Now, first of all, I really do recommend that when you have your binding fabric that you use a little bit of sizing. I personally avoid the, the starch that you get over the counter, what I call over the counter at grocery stores. I much prefer the sizing that you get from your local dealers um, because it doesn't break down to sugars and stuff like that. It, you can just store it forever um, and never have to worry about washing it. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab a smaller piece here for the demo. So I am going to go ahead and change my foot. So we talked about the, inter, um, the interchangeable dual feed walking foot for the Designer Epic on down. Now when it comes to the Designer Epic 2, however, we have the integrated dual feed. Let me just turn my laser off. So there is a foot that is designed for the integrated dual feed here. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that on. And my integrated dual feed is on. And I do want to kind of cut a little pointy. That is a sewing term. I need to cut a pointy. So I get my little point. It just helps feed it in to the attachment. I'm going to go ahead and put my um, attachment back on. Before I do, one thing, one little word of caution that I do recommend is to make sure that your bobbin is full before you start on a big quilt project because it's very sad if you have to stop. I'm going to go ahead and put this back on. Okay. So once this is attached, or once this is all adjusted, then it's just happy days. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and feed my pointy through. Now this is where if I had one of the seams for attaching the binding, I would want to make sure that I've got them pressed in the right direction. Um, if not, I would flip it over and start from the other end. Now again, this is the rake, the fence, the squiggly thing, um, and that is going to add some tension to to the binding so you can use scissors you can use stilettos i'm going to just use my senior for give it a pull now this is what i really want you to see right down here because this is where really where the magic happens so i'm going to go ahead and give this a go and just pull it straight back and you'll see this folding that happens right in there like magic. Look at that. I just get so excited every time I pull that. So what it's doing is it's folding over the two ends of the binding. So it will catch on both the top and on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and just slide this in here. Now, when I do a, a quilt, I'm going to just kind of start close to the first corner stitch all the way around and then come and stop about an inch or two away from the other. I want to give myself a lot of room for ending my binding. So I'm going to do my long end on my little sample. So once I get it into position, I'm going to go ahead and lower my foot. And I'm not going to worry so much about getting this started. Um, because even if I'm off those first couple of stitches, I can take those out when I seal it up. So once I get into position, I'm really kind of paying attention to from the foot out. And I'm going to come and I'm going to stitch to the end. Now, normally when we do a traditional uh, binding where we stitch it and flip it, we stop about a quarter of an inch away. In this case, we're going to come all the way to the end of our batting here. So I'm just going to come on down. Well, one thing that I did tell you that I forgot was, um, and I always forget little things when I'm doing sometimes, but I want to change my stitch fabric to a woven heavy because I'm going through batting and a couple of layers and um, all of that kind of stuff. 
So I'm just going to touch my JOS advisor. I'm going to change my uh, fabric to woven heavy, and it's going to change my stitch length for me. I may even up it again, but I'm just going to leave it here. Um, the question, do you always stitch around uh, the edge of your quilt before doing binding? I actually stitch around the edge of my quilt a little edge stitch about an eighth of an inch away before I even quilt. So it helps kind of line up the edges. So when I'm doing stuff, it, it helps prevent distortion along the edges. But yes, I always edge stitch it. And if you've never done it before, I highly recommend it. It's going to help you in so many ways. Another thing, too, that I want you to notice here is that I'm working on a flat surface here. And I am a big fan of this. Whether you're a quilter, clothier, crafter, whatever, having a flat surface makes a huge difference in your sewing. Um, this is a table that has a sink in, but there are tables that you can put on your um, that you can stitch on a table. And the quilter's table is available and it's plexiglass just like this. It has nice little rulers on it, all kinds of fun stuff. But when you're working, especially with a quilt, is it's gonna pull on both sides and we don't want any of the weight pulling on everything. We want everything to lay flat. So it makes it just so much easier to uh, feed your fabric through. Um, can this device be used on a designer SE? That's a very good question. I don't believe so. I think the needle plate style is old. Um, I mean, what I mean is uh, as the time went on, the needle plates got a little wider. And I think the needle, if I remember right, the needle plate on the designer SC is very short here on the sides. So I don't think there's room, but I will look into it and I will get back to you on that. Um, did the device fold over the raw edge of the top and bottom binding? Yes, it did. I'm going to show you when I get, um, I'll show you when I get around to this corner. But again, I recommend a quilter's table uh, because it is going to change your life. I cannot stress it enough. So I'm going to come on over to the, to the, the edge of my quilt and I'm going to stitch all the way to the edge. Now, when I get here, I'm going to, again, you're going to see stuff happen with my hands here. I'm going to just take a back stitch, and then I'm going to go forward again, and I'm going to cut. And this is a little tip that was just passed on to me. If I go ahead and drop my foot here just for a second um, while I grab my pin, it'll actually help crease that a little bit for me. So I'm going to, okay, so, um, all right. So when it comes to, I just got a request to, to talk about um, the needle plate again. So I guess a few of you are asking, which means I didn't explain it very clearly. So let me review that again. So when on, on the Designer Epics, so the Designer Epic, the Designer Epic 2, the Epic 95Q and the Epic 980Q, 980, um, the Brilliance 80 and the Sapphire 85, they all have the correct plate with the two little holes that you need. Now, if you have the Diamond Series, the Ruby Series, the Topaz Series, um, there's quite a few of the Opal series. Um, those will need a separate plate because they do not did not come with the holes in the plate. We just didn't know we were gonna do that. So we just didn't have them. Um, but you can check with your dealer and let them know what kind of machine you have or what model you have. And they'll let you know if they can get one for you. Um, so hopefully that helps explains that a little bit. But yes, on some of the older machines, our old needle plates, I mean, if you take a look at how wide this is, and on some of the older machines, that used to be the size of our needle plate. So if that's the case, there's no place to put those holes in it. But as time went on, these needle, needle plates got wider. And so that's where we can attach that here. So did that answer the questions? Some thumbs up if it did. Okay. 
So I'm going to come over to this miter. Now, when I do the miter, I am a, a pin minimalist. So I tend to use just one pin. But I am going to show you a couple of different uh, ways to um, take care of this. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull this straight back. Now, I'm going to be very kind of tight here because it makes it easier for demoing. But you can pull, be generous with yourself. Give yourself some room to maneuver. Um, there are two rules of thumb. There are some that prefer not to cut the thread and leave the tails in case you want to hand stitch anything later. I would rather chew off my arm than do hand stitching, so I cut. And I'm just going to trim my little back threads. All right, so when, when we do this, I'm gonna pull this out just a bit. I wanna get my thumb, oh, so I was gonna show this. So yes, when it's stitching, you can see that it's pulling the fold under on the back and it's pulling the fold under on the front. So yes, it's going to uh, fold both sides. So it's gonna be complete on both sides. So this guy, I'm going to just kind of shove my thumb right in between so that it will open that up. And that will get me in the start so I can get half of this to the back and half of this to the front. So you can kind of feel when you're in the right position and you can, once you know you're in the right position, one of the things you can do is you can go ahead and put a pin in right there. You can also take like little glue sticks or whatever and put a little dab of the glue stick right there before you pin it down. Then you can kind of wrap this over to this side and you can do the same thing with a little dab of glue stick or basting glue or anything that you like to use. Um, and you can also put a pin in here. So once I get this happy, I'm going to go ahead and put my pin in. I want a straight one. My, my pins are getting a little old. Okay. So I got a question. I will answer that in just a moment. But when we put this back in, this can sometimes be quite crinkly when we put it in, but not to worry. We're just going to go ahead and do a little dental floss, which means I'm going to kind of grab this end while I pull this and just kind of dental floss it back and forth. And it will straighten itself right out. So now we'll come back into lining it up. Now when it comes to lining it up, there are these little marks on it. Do you see this little red line right here? That is where my needle is. So I can come over here and get this and get my, my position exactly where that needle is. And it can line up right in there. So this is where my I had my stitch, uh, my sewing advisor set to woven medium. And this is where I set it to woven heavy. You can see the difference that it made right there. So the sewing advisor is a wonderful feature on those granulations. So once I take a few stitches, I'm going to go ahead and take my pin out. And I would just continue all the way around to the next side. And once I get to the end, so here I am. Uh, what's happening here is I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. I'm looking at the screen. So you will not be watching a monitor when you do this. Just cut it. So now we can just give this a trim. So now we can just give this a trim up. Just give this a trim. But we have our nice little miters on the front and the back. Now, 
this is not going to, if you like are a competition quilter, um, this is not going to replace that. So you may, if you're a competition quilter, you still may want to do it by hand. Um, and there are some, when I have a quilt that I want to live longer than I do, like the heirloom types, um, I may still do it by hand. But so much of our quilts are made to be used and loved and all that kind of stuff. And this is where this is great. Um, so I don't want you to think that um, you have to give up your hand, hand binding or anything like this, but this is awesome. I use this all the time. So any questions about that? Okay, so will this you, uh, work for sewing the jelly roll rug strips? That, that's a good question. Um, I, I don't know. I, that's a good question. I will have to experiment with that a little bit and come back to you um, because that is a very good question. I, I, I love that question actually, but I will look into it. I'm big into experimentation, so I'll look and see um, what we can do. Do you use the fix to start to fix stitch at the, the start and end to back stitch? Yes, you can use the fix stitch um, to start and the back stitch to uh, uh, end it. Uh, I like using the back stitch on the inside because it's covered with the, uh, the miter um, and then the fix stitch is a little bit smaller, uh, more controlled knot. Or you can even just pull them by hand and, and bury the knot if you like to do that as well. All right. So last time I, I, I talked about the binding attachment, um, somebody asked me if you could do it on a single layer of fabric. Why, yes, you can. So there's a little project that I made really, really quickly. I'm going to have to do it up because I, I was getting ready to do a demo on this and I just needed a little project. But this is just a simple piece of yardage. And all I did was decide I wanted it this long. I made a little scoop out for my handles and I bound it across the top here. So I did a little my binding across the top. And then I did my binding across the bottom where I mitered a single layer. And and then at the, after that, I just did a long strip. So I did a strap and then inserted my apron and just continued the strap down to the end. So it was a very, very quick little project. So it works exactly the same. So I'm gonna grab my single layer of fabric and it's gonna work exactly the same. Let me grab my scissors. And I'm only going to do the corner. I'm not going to do do much of it. Need a little pointy. Again, I'm going to just wrap it in here. And yes, I talk to myself all the time. I know I'm not the only one. So once again, the magic, when I come in, I pull this towards the back. It just falls into place. Okay, gonna make a liner out of me. It just falls into place, pull it into the back. Oh, it falls into place. Sorry. And I'm just gonna slide them in. I need a better position so I don't keep knocking me out. But I'm just gonna slide my fabric in. I'm going to stitch down to the corner and I'm going to answer that fixed question as well. So yes, I have my fix off, but if I were doing for real, I would use my fix. So I'm going to go ahead and stop, get my reverse. So the function buttons are here. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on so that I can show you that. And I'm just going to pull this guy out again a bit. Uh, 
Um, will it work on curves? I'm going to uh, show you those. Yes. So again, get it all into position when I'm happy with it. And I'm going to fold this over. And then once I'm happy with everything, I'll go ahead and just put my pin in. And you can see it works just the same as with a quilt sandwich. So where you could do it on clothing, you could do it on crafts, you could do it on quilts. Uh, the binding attachment is awesome. So it's going to make a little tie-off stitch. So it's going to stitch in a little place. Another thing that you could do if you didn't want to have a tie-off is you could come over and change your stitch length way down to like one, one and a half. And when you start stitching, it'll make, you don't want to see me, you want to see this. It'll start, um, it'll make these little bitty stitches right at the get-go. And then you can, my favorite thing for if you have an electronic machine is all I have to do is select that again and it goes back to my default. So I'm ready to go. So yes, you can use the fix. You can lower your stitch length. You can hand tie it if you prefer that. I'm going to go ahead and cut. So yes. All right. Okay. So let's see. The other thing that I want to show you too is the decorative. I showed you a little bit earlier about doing this decorative stuff. So when I do this kind of a thing, I want my positioning over a little bit differently. So I'm going to actually exchange this because I can walk you through how this all goes. So this will go to attach it for the first time. And then this will set onto this. And if you can see, there's kind of this little oval here, and that's where he just kind of sets right on there. And grab my little screws. Now these have washers on them, so you're gonna attach the washer and the screw together. And I am working a little bit around the camera. And I'm not gonna tighten it all the way down yet because I still want to be able to adjust it. So I'm gonna go ahead I still want to be able to adjust it. Now for this too, I'm going to be using a different foot. So I'm going to go ahead and take this guy off. And I am going to be using the edge stitching foot. Now there is a, a adjustable um, dual feed walking foot plate for that. But the the edge stitching or edge joining foot has a blade right into the center. So the edge joining foot, I'm gonna pop you on. And so much more graceful when I'm, you're gonna have to look at me for a minute. I gotta get that camera out of the way. So I'm gonna close there we go, all right. All right. So now what I want to do when I'm doing this, and for this, I will usually grab a binding that I've already done. So I'll usually have already stitched out a sample piece first before I make my adjustments. And what I want now is I want the blade is right in the center and I want the blade to set right on the edge of my 
binding right here. So once I've done that, now I can come and adjust this to get this in just the, the spot that I want so that he's going to kiss right up on that binding. Right, and then I just screw him down. So now when I do this, this guy, piece of binding here. So the foot that I'm using right now is the edge joining foot. And on the multi are the um, interchangeable, there is a foot for that as well. And it is called the changeable decorative foot. And you can see how it has the blade right in the center. But it is the edge joining foot on the, is it the same as the stitch in the ditch foot? Now the stitch in the ditch foot is more like a um, quarter inch piecing foot. So it's, it's a smaller foot with a blade in the center. And that's the one I use for stitch in the ditch. Because with the single hole, it just kind of holds everything down a little bit better. So when I do just straight forward, straight stitch in the ditch, that's the one I use. It's the quarter inch uh, stitch in the ditch foot with the blade right in the center. This one is wide, it has a wide opening. So this is the one I want to stitch in the ditch with decorative stitching, which is what I'm going to be doing right now. So um, is there a clear foot with the markings that will attach to the dual feed? Um, there is an open toe uh, foot uh, plate that goes to the interchangeable dual feed. Um, so if you go to the, 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 if you go to the description, so if you go to the description, it's, it's usually like um, right under the me or right in the first post or something like that. But it'll have a list of all the, the items that I'm using and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but there is an open toe for the interchangeable dual feed, and I don't believe there's a clear one. But the open toe is great, so you can still see what's going on. So, and if you have a lot of questions about what feet are available, you can go to Who's Born a Viking, and there is an accessory catalog. You can also go to your local dealer or gallery store, they really know what's going on. So they can help you a lot. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and throw this back in here. And I'll make sure you're screwed in. All right, yeah, there you go, I can tell it more attached. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this in. But yeah, we want to we want to keep in contact with our local dealers and gallery stores. So we like having them, so we want them to stick around. Okay. Come on. So once again, pull this to the back and watch some magic happen. Yeah, it just makes me so happy. Now, so in this case, what I want here is I want the blade to be right at the end of that binding, okay? And if I need to adjust it, which it looks like I might need to just do it just a bit, I don't want it pushing. So what it was doing was it was pushing a little too much. So I didn't want it pushing, I want it just to kind of set there. Now, when I, when I talk about by, um, decorative stitching with binding, there's a whole bunch that you can choose from. On the D menu is our quilt stitches. So there's quite a few that you can choose from, but there's you're not limited to just the quilt stitches. There are some stitches that will stitch one-sided um, that work really well as, as well. So stitches like this, you can mirror image it and stitch into the quilt. You can go this way and stitch into the binding. Uh, there's just all kinds of fun stuff to play with. Um, and I love decorative on my my quilt edges. But I'm just gonna go ahead and choose just this feather stitch. And, oh, you don't wanna see me. I don't see this. So when I go ahead and stitch, well, let me get a little bit more into it here. 
do want to stitch more on my quilt. And you'll see that it'll stitch on both sides as it goes. Nope, you want that. Just getting a little trouble. I usually don't start on the end, at the edge like this. I usually start in the middle of the quilt. Um, and that's what happens. Something is stuck. Hold on one second. I think I overstarched or oversized my fabric. It's a little stiff. So that reminds me too, when it comes to the sizing, there is some stuff that is designed for the cutting machines and that will make your um, fabric like cardboard. And you do not want to use that stuff because then it gets really too much stiff. I just used too much sizing and I'm getting too stiff. So let's try this again. There we go. So I just needed to release it a little bit from its hole. And another thing too is if anytime you feel like you're getting out of control, you can use your stiletto, your seam ripper, anything like that to help keep it into position. Yeah, this is too stiff. I'm gonna grab, I think I have a piece here. Little piece here that's not that that has no sizing at all. Um, the only problem is is that it's very printy, so it's not going to look as pretty. Yeah, this is really in there. So let me explain what's happening and why I'm changing. So even when I'm pulling this, you can see that I'm really having to kind of pull it because it's I used too much sizing here and it's not feeding through the way it should. I'm really having to yank it rather than it feeding through. And we really just want it to feed through smoothly. So this I'm going to get rid of because he's a problem child. Now this is what I'm saying. I've got this on the bias. This has no sizing whatsoever, um, but it's printing. So the stitches may be a little bit hard to see. I'm going to start in a little bit more like it normally would. So you can see here, this is feeding through nicely. It's not fighting me. That means it's feeding through here nicely. But you can create some nice decorative stitches when you're not having problems like the educator is having. <laughs> so when you're doing this, you do want to be light on the starch. Um, but I do always starch or size my stuff. So I just got a little too heavy handed with that one, that one little piece of fabric. So any questions about any of that so far? All right. What am I doing on time? Oh, I'm running out of time. All right, so curves, this came up. I'm gonna go ahead and show you with curves. Now, one of the things that I, so I'm gonna have to rethread this. When it comes to, I saved this for my curves. So when I have a large quilt or something like that, and I have a lot of binding, what I will do is I wrap it up. This is an old bit of um, a stabilizer tube. Or you could use paper towel, toilet paper, etc. But I just wind it up onto here, and then there's the thread stance that many of us already have. And I will just put this to the right of my machine, and it'll just feed through. Also oh, nice. Ooh. So it's very, very, very nice. So I'm just gonna feed this through one more time. Get my little pointy points. 
Now, when it comes to curves, one of the things is you will want to slow down a little bit. So, for instance, I tend to be very um, heavy-footed when I when I um, sew. So when I first started doing this, my curves were not coming out the way I had hoped. But once I slowed down, I got much better results. Oh, you don't want to see me. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this guy in. Oh, no, I want to change my foot. I want to change my stitch. So I'm just going to go right back to a straight stitch. And I'm going to put on my foot binding foot. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and slide this baby on in here. So once again, I'm not, oh, no, I'm going to take this plate off here. Remember, the reason I'm doing that, remember, I just did this for my decorative stitching here. Um, and I want to put mine back on because I have it set for the binding to stitch next to the edge rather than right on the edge. Okay. Yeah, that would have been fun. All right. I'm going to go ahead and thread him back in here. Okay. I'll take my foot off the pedal. Slide you back in. But when you look around on my backdrop, almost all of those quilts were done with the binding attachment. Because that's the way I do all my quilts now. All right. There we go. Happiness happening. I'm going to go ahead and slide this in here. In there. And so when it, we're doing the curve, I'm going to back up a little bit so you can see my curve. So when I'm doing the curve, you do want to slow down a little bit. Plus, when it comes into here, we want this to be kind of straight. So there is this kind of little push that's happening here. It's not excessive. I'm not killing myself over it. But I do want to kind of straighten this out as it gets to, to the, the curve. One thing, too, is I also want to move my needle over a bit. So I want to move my needle over a bit. And I'm going to move it just up over to the right just a little bit. Because let me, when I, you do this, because we're pushing here, right, to keep this going, that can cause it to shift a little bit off. So when I'm sewing straight, that needle is exactly where I want it to be. But when I'm doing a curve, it's going to shift that, ju that edge just a bit. And your stiletto, seam ripper, and stuff may also come in handy just to kind of knock it back into like if you're getting it out. Yeah, my needle needs to come over a bit more. I'm still a little Yeah, get a little heavy, a little lead foot here. So let's, let me show you where I was, what I was seeing and why I was moving my needle over. And I am a big fan of test your, your stuff before you go. So when I started, I was going off here. So that's why I wanted to move my needle over a little bit more so that it could catch uh, more of a bite there. But so you can do a curve very nicely. Um, there is a little more patience that comes with a curve versus the straight. With the straightaways, you can go 900 miles an hour if you want to. Um, so the, the non... 
integrated dual if you're is there a non-integrated dual feed if you're going to if you don't have the integrated dual feed you will be using the interchangeable walking foot and so that uh you can use that if you don't want to use the walking foot then you can use an edge stitching foot but i highly recommend to use your even feed walking foot when you're working with heavier layers you're going to get much better results but yes you can use an edge stitching foot so are there any other questions uh before we wrap it up um well let me show you one more thing oh one thing i did want to talk about uh real quickly is that you can use this was something that came up the last time i did this was can you use pre-packaged double fold bias tape and i don't have any here but i went ahead and made some and would have been experimenting with it and it turns out yes you can so with the double fold pre-made bias tape now this i made of course but you'll have that where it's it's folded both sides are folded towards the center and you have the 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 nice fold on both so when we want to do this you're going to say, do the same thing. You're going to go ahead and slide this in. You want to make sure that you use the half inch double fold bias tape. Slide this baby in there. Now, when we come through here, he's not going to do the wraparound because it's already folded into position. So he's just going to just kind of lay into the position that he needs to be in. So it's, oh, to close the end. Yes, I'll do that real quick. I was going to do that. So this one, you're just going to treat exactly the same as you would a single. Yeah, so much faster when I'm on the straight and ring. So yes, the, the, end, the end, the start and stop. And I've got my thing already. All right, so it is actually very quick. Cool. Where are you? You're not in. There you are. Okay. So when we do the start and stop of a quilt, so I would start at the end, about an inch or so, go all the way around and come to the other end. Now, one thing you want to do is to leave yourself um, enough overhang. So the way I do it, there's lots of ways to do this, but the way I do it is whatever my width of my binding, in this case, one and three quarters inches, I'm going to overlap it one and three quarter inches and cut there. Then I'm going to take those ends, normally I do this at a cutting table and an iron and all that ironing board and all that. And then I bring those ends together and I'm going to stitch there. Uh, and when you open it up, it lies in flat, just like this. So then I just give everything a press. Then I can come over. Now I've adjusted my needle a bit. Now I can come over and out. Now I'm just going to connect the dots. So I'm just going to come in and line that up. And I'm going to stitch on down to the next one. And I'm in a hurry, so. I'm rushing, so. But this is something that is common that you may want to do is to lay this down at the beginning with a seam ripper or a stiletto. But then you can get, so now you just kind of connect the two dots. And like you'll see here, I did already do the square miter corner um, earlier. So this will be recorded. Um, so you can watch it again if you'd like, because I do go over this, the miter um, options. Okay, so any last questions? Because they're going to kick, Facebook is going to kick me out in just one moment. Um, 
So I will, once this is over, I will go ahead and get off and answer any questions that uh, I see on, that I didn't get to in here. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. And I want to thank you for helping me to keep the world sewing. Woohoo! And I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.